I did not grow up with hope. I was taught reason and explanation and ways to rationalize my words, even if they were not spelled correctly. I was taught left from right from wrong. In the first grade, I was taught the word because, and I put it in every sentence thereafter. A few days later, my teacher told me that I shouldn't put because in every sentence that I wrote, that it was not strong use of my writing skills. It was the first memorable instance of someone telling me my opinions didn't matter. I quickly learned that good grades came with how well you were able to recite information, and I learned how to follow the rules and all that jazz. I became Goody Two Shoes' twin sister. It was the same thing every day. Structure, but in a good way, like the bunny on TV that just keeps going and going and going, trying to find its way back home. I knew something was missing, though, because nothing filled my time like the drawings do in the margins of my math homework. <coughs> like the drawings do in the margins of my math homework. Whenever I went to practice or some sporting event, it felt like I was visiting a friend's house. Usually welcoming, sometimes with a lot of people, sometimes just a few. But always a friend's house, never my own. To me, a home would be some place you could always come back to. A place where there are more snacks than members, more love than hate. And this sounds so nice to me, because wouldn't we all like to believe our lives are spinoffs of Hallmark movies, and we just don't get that channel? But home doesn't have to be the place where you sleep. It should be the place where you don't have to announce you came alone because the people in it don't care. It's funny, because I would like to believe I found my home on accident. I was a sophomore in high school, trying to find the door to a possibility. The first door I tried, flung open to a class I had already passed, and I came to the second door with better odds than the first, and I hesitated to try the handle, because I wanted my future to be chosen for me. Like most other things were chosen for me, well, like how everything has been chosen for me, and now there's more fear of choice than hope for success, because if I'm being completely honest, I'm not made for a desk job. I fell in love with rainbows, and poetry, and while most people wrote essays to pass AP exams, I was the defective typewriter. But I tried the handle anyway, and I pulled a little too hard, falling over my self-confidence and preconceived knowledge about doors. This time it was locked, though, so I had an excuse. I'm about to ask if anyone has a map, but I see a third door. Now, I couldn't tell you why I stood up again, walked another 10 feet, and tried that door, because in all honesty, I don't know why. But I know that I met the glance of 20 people so full of life, they seem to be bottles of carbonated soda that have been rolling around in the back of a car for an entire road trip. It seemed if I had just dreamed, but I found it, my home, in a drama classroom that will always smell like stale air to me, where people can become something. For me, it will be a masterpiece of memories photographed for a photo album to live somewhere in my future house. The room consisting of first years and final years, all floating around on helium. Because when every tech week comes, that makes my midnight snacks my dinner. When we go to every single rehearsal and they never actually end on time, but we all say that they do. When my alarm clock announced my hour and a half of sleep was over, I still got up. I went to a full day of classes. People acknowledged my tired because it was carrying its bags underneath my eyes, but I can tell you that it was opening night. And the show must go on. So I eat my protein cookie and I stage manage that show. <laughs> Just so happened to be a musical. And for a moment, on my opening night, I didn't think about my AP Lang assignment that I haven't started, or about that history test that I haven't started studying for, the fact that my AP graphic design portfolio is not finished. It was just me. A really uncomfortable headset and 231 cues to make a room full of people feel something. So it doesn't matter what it is or where I come from. What matters is you want to be here. You all chose to be here tonight to listen to a 16-year-old woman talk about her life. I have met some of your egos, though. The ones that love money and power 
and capitalism. They have shaken my hand with stereotypes that hence got stuck to my skin and became tattoos across my body. Some of you are bold enough to tell me you didn't want to come to my show. So tell me that it takes too much time, that it's an inconvenience. Tell me that there are better things I should be doing with my life. Tell me that it's just not worth it and you can't make a career out of it. Tell me all the things you want to change about myself. But what you don't realize is that I have stopped listening because I have found my home, a place I will always come back to. And if I am being completely honest, I believe that there is truly no place like home. Thank you.